President Trump has created a commission to combat drug addiction and the opioid crisis, and that group is now urging the president to declare a national emergency due to the rising number of deaths reported on a monthly basis. What can be done? Now what is needed? Harry Nelson is the founder and managing partner of the health care provider law firm of Nelson Hardiman. He's also co-author of the book From Obamacare to Trump Care, Why You Should Care. Welcome back. Good to Thanks. See you. Good Great to be with you guys. Um, so what are the factors that define an uh, opioid abuse as an epidemic? in America? So uh, currently we're seeing about 50,000 deaths a year uh, as a result of opioid overdose. Wow. That's, that's, the, that's the lowest number that's being reported. Mm -hmm. It may be as high as 60. So if you think about it over the course of a decade, uh, we're talking about half a million to 650,000 Americans who are going to lose their lives. That's on a pace of, if you think back to the 80s and the AIDS crisis, yeah. Yeah. it's the leading cause of accidental death. Uh, it's past drunk driving and gun deaths, so that's why it's being treated as a yeah. national emergency. How would a national emergency be declared under the law, and then what would the response be to that? Sure. So there, the, a national emergency is a power that the president has uh, to, and it releases funding. It's a lot of mm -hmm. the laws that we have that limit funding for Medicaid or for emergencies, uh, are, those are reserves that we have that could be made available to states. Uh, and it's a way of getting care that's not uh, available right now. In many cases, there's very limited kinds of treatment available. There may just be detox or short-term outpatient. And with the crisis at the level it is, people need more access to residential and to other kinds of therapy to, to try and, and, and quell this problem. It, but at the base, o opioids, if used properly, can help folks with their pain management. What are we doing wrong? Sure. So it's a complicated problem. Uh, opioids are an important uh, th pro uh, solution to the problem of pain. And we have a crisis of pain that's kind of underlying this with a lot more people reporting pain. So I, I look at the problem from three sides, the patient, the, uh, the doctor, and the drug companies. If you look at it from the patient side, we have to look at why patients are reporting so much pain. Mm -hmm. One simple issue is that hospitals have been instructed by the National Joint Commission to ask patients to rate their pain on a scale of 1 to 10 mm -hmm. with smiley faces if you've ever been in a, right. in a hospital. Yeah. So patients have been encouraged to, uh, uh, to, to talk, to, to really notice their pain. And, and we, but we do have an underlying problem. If you look at the hot zones in this country, places where people are out of work, pain is tied to a lot of other deeper issues. So that's the patient side. Mm. On, the, uh, on the drug uh, manufacturer side, we have a real problem with drug manufacturers aggressively advertising <coughs> opioids and promoting them as, even though they're one of many solutions, they're the one that's been pushed, which is why we're now seeing states suing drug makers. Mm. And if you look at the, dr the rates of death and the sales rates, for many years they've tracked hand in hand. More drugs, more opioids sold, more deaths. And on the physician side, uh, we, you know, physicians have been encouraged to treat pain and to make sure patients are feeling well, but they have not necessarily, you know, learned, uh, been given the tools to adapt to an environment of, of, uh, of, of addressing the danger of the highly addictive nature of these drugs. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to give you one yeah. number that blew me away, if, you're, if you get a 10-day prescription out of a hospital visit for opioids, you have a 20% likelihood of becoming an addict. Which 20%? It's a crazy number. Yeah. It is. Wow. And, you know, some pose the question, we don't look enough maybe at alternative medicine for some folks, or, you know, it's always maybe writing the prescription. Is that... Is that another issue? I think that's also, that's an issue. It's, a, you know, our, our system likes easy solutions and low-cost solutions, and it's cheaper to give people pills than it is to give them tools to, uh, to, to strengthen themselves, to teach them how to use uh, things like meditation and, and, and wellness. Like, those take longer-term mm -hmm. uh, resources. And, uh, and, and the other solutions that are out there are also cost money, and so that, that's part of the, the problem. Here in California, recent action taken to change pain therapy for a portion of workers' compensation. Tell us about that. Yeah, so this is a really interesting place where the rubber meets the road. Uh, the workers' comp system in California is dealing with a huge population of injured workers mm -hmm. who have long-term chronic pain. So there's a, there's, a, there's a pain crisis in California around work comp. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the system is afraid that doctors are abusing uh, the system and are billing too much. So they've cut off payment to a form of non-opioid pain treatment called neuromodulation. This is just one of several types of care, that, but it's available throughout the country. We're one of only two states that doesn't pay for it for injured workers. It's an electrical stimulation that's used as an alternative to medication to uh, address pain, like back pain, for example, mm -hmm. which is a big problem. And, it, you know, it's a problem because the state is worried about getting overbilled and abuse, fraud and abuse, uh, but injured workers aren't getting access to a non-opioid uh, kind of care. Mm.
Wow. Well, the stats are startling uh, regarding opioid addiction. Thanks so much for being here. We appreciate it. Once again, book is titled From Obamacare to Trump Care. Harry Nelson is a partner at Nelson Hardiman, a law firm for health care providers. For more information, you can check out the website, trumphealthcarebook.com. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Great to be with you.